Greetings and welcome to the Stage Zero Life Sciences webinar. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, James Howard Tripp, CEO and Chairman. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. I uh, would like to ask you just to take a moment to um, read through the disclaimer um, before we um, move on. State Zero is um, all about cancer, and um, our primary thrust in life is around Aristotle, and Aristotle really is where we began. So it's been many years of um, extremely hard work. We're very pleased that we're at the point at which we're about to begin bringing this to market. And for us, this is the really big opportunity. This is the billion-dollar uh, market we go at. How we got here is um, through commercializing um, some of the proprietary tests that we've had, notably Colon Sentry. Colon Sentry has come out of the same platform um, that is Aristotle, and so we know it works. We know it's proven. Uh, we'll talk about that more. But we also have tests um, that we've licensed in, notably for breast cancer as well as prostate. PCR, um, antibody testing, everything to do with COVID-19, um, I think has really sideswiped the entire market. We'll talk about this a little more as we go. It's a problem and an opportunity for a series of groups uh, that are hanging on um, for dear life um, because it's mostly taken the business away. For some of the others, like ourselves, that have been able to pivot into this, it's not only an opportunity to generate significant revenue, but it's actually also an opportunity to bring a whole set of new customers to the table, notably those that we want in cancer. And so for us, it's a really good opportunity. What allows us to get to a lot of this is not only the fact that PCR testing, for example, is our bread and butter. It's what underpins um, a lot of the work that we do with Aristotle. But um, we've taken the last two years to build out an entire telehealth system. And it's the telehealth system that is proving to be absolutely critical right now. If, um, sorry, the slides are taking just a little while to catch up. Aristotle, um, huge. It's a single sample of blood. It is 10 discrete cancers, nine for women, six for men, as we'll bring it out. We will add more cancers as we move forward. It has high sensitivity and specificity. It is, we believe at the moment, the only one of the groups in it that are trying to do this that can discriminate each cancer. Again, high sensitivity and specificity. This comes because of all of the work we've done over the last many years and the tens of thousands of patients in many disease states we've taken through. We've currently validated it, um, but again, behind this, don't forget, tens of thousands of patients. And we're moving now to commercialization. We believe we'll have it in the market by year end. If um, we look at COVID, and I think we have, to, we have to stop and we have to think it through a little bit because we're still hearing quite a bit about, well, what about 2019? 2019 is dead and buried. Um, in actual fact, everything before Q1 2020 or even in Q1 2020 is now a different world. And you have to think about it that way and you have to think about how you're preparing for it. And I think the companies that are going to do well and come out of the other side are the ones that are able to respond to this, able to change their positioning, um, able to actually use the opportunity that's presented with, within all of the issues with COVID. We're lucky. Um, we're a um, peer certified high complexity lab. We're one of the preferred groups that FDA would want to do the testing. And we've been able to leverage that um, very successfully. I think really nice is that we've been able to partner with current and new service providers to provide the testing. And the new is good, but, but, but sorry, I mean the current is good, but the new is even better because we found that with COVID, agreements that used to take many months to actually get, and get on the table and get consummated, you can now do very, very much more quickly. People want to move quickly. It's also bringing us a whole set of um, customers that have a high interest in COVID. We'll talk more about this as we go, go down the presentation. But it means that as we bring them for COVID, we get them to stay for the cancer. 
And so we're being very selective in who we work with and how we do this. As our model was, um, we'd be moving more to the cash pay basis, more off of telehealth. Um, COVID is being offered on that basis, and that's working very well for us. In fact, it's an absolute necessity in many instances because we're being required to pay for our reagents either up front or on very tight timelines. Therefore, you need to ensure your cash flow keeps pace with that. And I think we indicated what our initial interest was in terms of your know, 250,000 plus tests that obviously has continued to grow as we move forward. The testing that we do is, um, you know, both PCR and here we work with um, clear um, certified groups. We work with EUA, so for example, Thermo Fisher. We work with Beckman. We work with BTNX. Um, we're moving forward to make sure that we stay current with the marketplace in terms of looking at all of the newer forms of doing it, looking at very innovative ways of delivering the test that will continue to build as we go forward. But I think it's, it, it's worth talking a little bit about PCR testing. And so a lot of, lot of what happens as we go into this is you have to have a plan. You have, to, you have to have it laid out end-to-end -end in terms of how you work with it. You start with PCR, which is for the live virus. You move to antibodies, which is to allow you to see not only the spread of the disease, but who, in fact, has already been um, infected. That plays out in a variety of ways, and we're not getting into the debate as to whether you have inferred immunity or not. Um, however, we have to sit on the side of um, the vaccines, which believes there has to be an advantage to this. Therefore, knowing where your, your employers lie, and we work very much with employers, um, it's of clear benefit. We're able to put all of this together and take it through in a plan, as we talked about. And I think as we talked about initially in the recently completed um, prospectus offering, we believe that within the next sort of nine to 12 months, the opportunity in front of us with just COVID is anywhere from about 18 to $30 million. For an organization like ours that is lean and mean, that typically burns less than $5 million a year, this obviously is um, very good revenue. It allows us to move a whole series of our programs forward that much faster. That's what it's all about. We've come up with, I guess, come for COVID, stay for cancer. And uh, we've talked quite a bit about telehealth. Telehealth is a major differentiator for us. We took two years to build it. And um, it is this that is, in actual fact, allowing us um, to, to leverage this opportunity perhaps better than a lot of others. We believe that COVID is around certainly for, let's say, the, the next sort of 12 months. Um, it may be around a lot longer than that in terms of the real problem. We're prepared to work with it all the way through. And for example, we're working at state level, we're working at county level, we're working at city level. Certainly as we work through planning with groups like that, the groups are looking at it over the same time frame as we work through um, everything as we try and get some semblance of normality back into the marketplace. I think what has been key with us is, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, we were invited to join the MRSA VIP program. Discussion at that point was all around cancer. It was focused on Aristotle. It was off of our current tests, but building absolutely into Aristotle. As COVID became much more of an issue, that began to get leveraged out. Um, MRSA deals mostly with companies and employers. That's who we want. And so if I go with the MRSA program, and I think I can say, justifiably say, that we're becoming one of the preferred groups within the MRSA program. Um, we're dealing with small companies, mid-sized companies, and large companies. And it is because we offer end-to-end -end solutions. It is because we come with a plan. It is because we come with a, a way to enable the employers to open. And again, part of this links back always, always through the telehealth program. Aristotle, we're getting ready for commercial launch. As we mentioned earlier, we'll have it ready by year end. Moving to talk just a little more about um, the telehealth program, because I think a lot of people are saying, why did you put so much time and effort into it? 
we believed about two years ago that the market was moving somewhat in this way. Um, none of us expected what came, came out of um, COVID, but it certainly accelerated things. For example, um, I was part of a um, conference a little while ago with the Boston groups of hospitals, um, the Harvard group as we went through, and the Harvard hospitals were reporting that prior to COVID, only about 2% of what they did was in the telehealth arena. Now, in, at, at the height of COVID, in excess of 80% of what they do is in the telehealth arena. In fact, it's the one thing that's allowed them to keep moving forward. If we talk to New York and work with New York, New York um, believes that telehealth is one of the key differentiators. If you have it, you can actually build these programs out successfully. If you don't have it, um, it it's a clumsy effort to actually make it happen. So telehealth, absolutely key and is one of our key differentiators. If we look at why um, we did some of this, it is, as we've talked through, um, how it's building. We talk about what the opportunity is. I think as we look to, it's more of a build towards patient-centric medicine. We think patients are becoming more, um, more involved. They want more con control over what it is that they do. And um, we, we've looked at the physician groups. And so you now start to go out and say, okay, how can we work with, with physicians? How can we work with hospital groups? If most of physician practices are closed, if most patients are at home, if most testing facilities are not open and operating correctly, then how do you get your sample drawn? And the way you get your sample drawn, um, particularly if you're an employer, is with groups like ours. And so that's where it's beginning to play out. I forgot to mention one thing, too, coming out of the Boston conference, is that even post-COVID, post people expect things to begin to go back towards more, you know, less use of um, telehealth, but no one on the panel believed it would be less than 50%. So I think that's the fundamental change that is occurring at a lot of this. If you go to the next slide, um, it's some indication of um, the size of the opportunity as it goes. One of the key things to remember in all of this is that COVID is dominating everything at the moment. That means a lot of other diseases, notably cancer, are not getting the attention they need. And we're starting to see issues as a result of that. We're starting to see some of the cancer um, percentages rise, the incidents rise. People want to get back to screening. They particularly want to get back to screening in a way that is practical. All of this actually ties in with where we're going. The sentinel principle, which um, underlies Aristotle, is pretty much the following. It's the fact that circulating blood reflects in a detectable way what is occurring throughout the body. And the subtle changes that occur in cells due to the disease trigger detectable changes in mRNA expression. It is these changes that we detect. We're not a genetic test. We're not like BRCA. We don't tell you that you have a um, predisposition um, towards getting cancer. We tell you today whether you have it or whether you don't have it, and that's a critical piece. If you look at the initial work that was done, um, colon sentry was validated in the first 10,000 patient study in North America. We've since published on the first 100,000 patients that went through on a commercial basis and showed that the science is rock solid. Underlying this are many tens of thousands of additional patients that have gone through as we've looked at all the other diseases that we have dealt with. And you pull all of this together, and that is Aristotle. Why have to push on cancer? Just a reminder, I think that most cancers are found late. Most patients don't adhere to cancer screening. We've talked very often about the colorectal cancer screening and the fact that a good third of patients refuse to get screened. We've talked about lung cancer and a very high percentage of people that don't get screened. Remember the statistics around colorectal cancer, you find it early, you've got about a 90% chance of surviving five years. You find it late, you've got about a 10% chance of surviving five years. Lung cancer is even worse than that. 
So it's absolutely critical that we find it early. The gaps in current screening are key, and I'll talk a little more to this on the, uh, the colorectal side in a moment. But for example, currently colonoscopy misses a large percentage of the right-sided cancers. Stool tests don't pick up right-sided lesions. Our test does. Low-dose CT, benign pulmonary nodules. As you run them to ground, there's about a 96% false positive rate, and we can continue on that basis. Therefore, everyone knows you need a simple, more straightforward way of doing it. Blood test is the way to do it, and if you can do it on a single blood test with multiple cancers, particularly with high sensitivity and specificity, and discreetly, each cancer, not it is a cancer, we'll have to see if we can find out what it is, but each discrete cancer, that's the key with this. We go to the various segments we're working in. Again, we've talked about this quite often. Physician practices will always be part of what we do, um, but I think as we've been focused, we're much more into patient-directed testing, that off of telehealth, as we've talked about. We're much more into working with large health systems. We're much more into working with employers. Aristotle, as we're bringing it forward, we're actually partnering with um, novel groups of cancer clinics, and we will actually bring it to market through the cancer clinics, which means that it is available immediately through a rather novel way of doing it. This ties very much with employers as we've talked to them. It ties with the insurers as we've talked with them, and it builds out. Health systems tie into that. The final piece with that is the patient-directed testing. So it's not that we're ignoring physician practices, but I think you can see exactly where our thrust is. Now, back to uh, Aristotle. And I think a little, little bit of... Um, differentiating how we go through this. Sorry, the slide's taken a while. There we are. Key with this, if, if, if you look at what most of the groups that um, we are competing with or will compete with are doing, is that at the moment, the technology is still relatively novel. It, it's not yet fully proven. In fact, in some instances, not proven at all. And so part of what we get is, yes, we believe we can find cancer. It's not, we, we're not entirely sure which cancer it is, which means we're going to have to do a significant amount of work after this to be able to tell you what, what it is. But it could also be a series of diseases that are not cancer. So it's useful. It's useful, but it's not fully useful. Ours at this point, and again, because as I come back, remember that we started looking at um, the rheumatoid um, diseases. From there, we went to um, the cardiac area. We, for example, can find um, congestive heart failure. We went to neuroscience. We can find Parkinson's. We can find schizophrenia. We can find major depression. Uh, we can find Alzheimer's. Uh, we've done work in all of these areas. Then you move out into the cancer side, and obviously we've done significant work in cancer. We're bringing the first 10 forward. We will bring additional ones as it continues to build out. So when we, when we talk about our test and we say we believe that it's breast cancer, we actually mean we believe it's breast cancer. We don't think it's, it, it's breast cancer or ovarian cancer or one of the others. We mean it's breast cancer. We're also talking to it with high sensitivity and specificity. We also don't mean that it's congestive heart failure or that it's rheumatoid arthritis, areas where you may look for, for inflammation as well. Why? Because we've actually studied these areas and we brought them all forward together. So we have much greater certainty around what it is that we're doing. Um, it's also very novel in terms of where we are. And so I'll, I'll draw a comparison between current um, colon sentry and colon sentry is a good test. It's the first blood test that was available um, for um, you know, screening for colorectal cancer. We can find right-sided lesions equally as well as left. We talked about that stool test, as we know, do not, do not find right-sided lesions. It's right-sided lesions that are the most dangerous. You now move to the colorectal cancer test that we're going to have in Aristotle. And although we'll talk to it as a colorectal cancer test, it in actual fact is a series of discrete tests all within one. So first of all, we will discriminate between polyps and frank colorectal cancer lesions. 
This should be the first test that can tell you whether you have polyps or whether you have frank colorectal cancer lesion. In addition to that, we'll be able to tell you whether it's stage one or stage two or stage three or four. And so we get to interrogate it that way, and we can give the results as we move out through that. The advantage with this is not only a series of firsts as we take it through, but obviously Aristotle is a living thing. As we move out and we continue to gain more and more information, we'll continue to be able to shade the information we're able to provide back to the providers um, even more. So for us, it's very, very exciting. It's also many, many years of hard work, and um, it's nice to actually see it begin to come to market. Summing it up, right now, what we're about is Aristotle. I know there's a lot of noise about COVID. COVID, we're not diminishing. It is a major revenue and positioning and partnership opportunity for us. But we're about Aristotle. This is what we're bringing forward. And as I mentioned, again, we expect to have it um, commercially available um, by year end. So that, that is a good thing. Secondly, we're not moving away from our other test. There are other ways to utilize breast entry. There are other, you know, PHI may continue to play a role as we drive through it. But obviously with colon sentry, colon sentry will become subsumed um, with, within Aristotle. But we're also adding additional cancers to the Aristotle panel, and we'll drive it through. I think, as I mentioned, too, we're going to bring it forward with a series of very, not, very novel partnerships, which um, I think people will really like. So we'll take it there. Second, um, PCR, both the problem and the opportunity. Problem in that um, if you're just doing regular testing, you're potentially in a lot of pain at the moment. If you are able to do um, COVID testing as well, while we all weather this and move through it and use it, particularly use it to build your positioning for the next stage, then you're in a very good position. We believe we're in a very good position. Finally, telehealth, as we've talked about it, telehealth is an absolute key differentiator. It was a um, huge amount of time and effort to build it out. We're very pleased that we did because by tying that to the end-to-end -end solutions that we bring to the plans that we bring around all of this, it is what is, is a key differentiator for us. And so with that, I'll um, end the presentation and um, let's see what we have in questions. Okay, in terms of this, I, I think there's questions as to when we'll be presenting data on where we're at. As we've mentioned all the way through, we just did a prospectus offering. We laid out in a very comprehensive document what it is that we intend to do, and um, we will report results, as we said we would, um, when we announce the quarter, and that will be about in the middle of August. So uh, we'll have information there. And at this point, no further questions, so uh, we can hand it over to you and close the session out. Thank you so much. With no further questions, this does conclude today's conference. We appreciate you joining us. We hope everyone has a wonderful day.